Dr. Patel, you said um, that you can put people to sleep um, with a thing called sedation dentistry. Um, and, and there are many reasons why a patient might want to do that. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit how sedation dentistry works, for who it is made for, and uh, tell us if it has any type of um, negative effects or something you know like that. So tell us all about sedation dentistry and its advantages and for whom it is. Sedation dentistry is really for very nervous patients. Uh, a lot of patients here in California uh, never go to the dentist because they're very, very scared. There are uh, several levels of sedation dentistry that uh, one offers. Uh, one is just uh, uh, medications that are provided for the patient with a prescription that they take at home, then they come in. Then there is uh, prescriptions that we will administer here in the office uh, via the mouth where it's just a tablet, it's crushed, it's put in uh, under the tongue. And the third form is to give an IV where uh, when you go for a colonoscopy, you get the same kind of medication. It's very safe, it's very controlled. Uh, we are always communicating with the patient. All the monitors are on just like in a hospital. So uh, the biggest advantage is if you're very scared of the dentist, don't be, because you will not know that we worked on you, you will go home and you will be cured of your dental disease. All the things that you need can be done in one session. Therefore, you know, you don't have to be continuously medicated. So it's a very, very advantageous situation for patients that are very scared. To, to to do their work. So the, when when a patient is under this oral sedation, under this you know sedation, uh, whichever way he is he is under, but he still can talk to you. He can still be responsive to you. Uh, uh, yes or, or no? Or or uh, uh, sedation dentistry is defined as a state of unconsciousness where we are able to communicate with the patient. So if I put my hand on your shoulder and say, Helmut, breathe, you will open your eyes slightly and start breathing for me. We never have the patient totally unconscious. So you're right. We are always able to communicate with the patient. Mm -hmm. The patient is not totally unconscious. However, the patient never knows or remembers what is uh, being done to them afterwards. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's a very pleasant experience. They come in, they have their work done, and uh, they're fine with that. You know. Well, I, I have heard a story that um, um, I, I think it was in Washington that a patient did all his work and um, tremendous amount of work. Then he walked up to the um, um, uh, front office, you know, to the receptionist office, and the girl said to him, um, well, wonderful, um, you know, um, um, your work is done. He says, what work is done? I haven't had any work done. When are we going to start? You're already asking me for money. What's wrong with you? Um, you know, because obviously he didn't want to pay because no work was done. Um, did you ever have that problem? Are you... <laughs> <laughs> well, most of, most of the time, most of the time, my patients uh, are usually put in a wheelchair and taken to their car, and they really don't uh, don't remember anything when they come in for uh, for their post-operative uh, examinations and consultations. So we don't have those kind of incidents because we make I sure was, that was, we take. I was just trying to be <laughs> funny. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But but um, but you're right. I mean, it's it's a very very pleasant way to do do dent mm. dentistry for patients that are very scared. You know, well, it looks, if it they're looks very to, scared and they don't it they don't go that, in at all, it yeah. it is much better way and a humane way to do it. Obviously, obviously. Uh, obviously, because, you know, obviously, if we're scared of something, it wouldn't matter what that is. We're not doing it. If you're scared of water, we don't go and swim, we, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Um, it, so so that's great. But wouldn't it be also 
phenomenal for patients who, well, they're not necessarily all that scared, even though everybody is a little bit anxious of going in the dental chair, uh, and it's at least uncomfortable, and it's, um, you know, like when I go for a cleaning, and which takes about whatever, 40 some minutes, well, it's not that it is painful, or a root canal, which I had, I don't know, some uh, 12, 14 years ago, it was not painful at all, but, you know, counting sheep while you sit there and a guy works on you for an hour, it can get pretty boring for a hyperactive guy like me, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, isn't it also good for people who think or are obviously busy and they don't want to go for uh, nine dental visits over nine weeks to fix something, but say, you know, doc, can you just sit me in at 10 o'clock in the morning, walk me out at two o'clock in the afternoon and get my whole mouth fixed wouldn't it be good for those type of people also because that time to come and go come and go and uh, is, is is extremely uh, powerful it's, it's worth a lot to them yes uh, all kinds of long cases uh, it, it is a very nice facility for the patient to have where they come in they get all their work done and they're, they're asleep during that time so uh, it's 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 for different groups of people but mainly as i said it's for people that are extremely scared i mean if 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 you're a normal patient and you you want a long appointment of course it's extremely uncomfortable to be in a chair for four hours so right. if you are sedated that time goes by and you don't know anything and and and, and it's very beneficial to those patients also yes Great. Ask me, what about children, teenagers? Can they have it? Should they have it? Um, you, you know, we hear about children who are like, uh, well, not all that cooperative. The pedodontist, yes, the pedodontist always faces this uh, uh, every day where, where he will have a three-year-old that has five teeth that are rotten because of baby bottle syndrome or whatever the mom is doing, giving them sugared water or whatever. And, and they need a lot of work. These children no way are going to be able to be treated normally. You can't talk to a three-year-old that I'm going to numb your mouth. The only way you can treat them is sedate them. And therefore, sedation dentistry is an extremely important tool for our pediatric dentist because that's the only way he can work on these young children. I mean, not all children need it, but the ones that need it, the facilities are there. Right, beautiful. So, so for children, it's it, it is a good good facility for parents because otherwise they are just struggling to get their kids treated. Mm. Now, are there any other known uh, side effects rather than the patient probably needs a chauffeur to drive him home, but uh, he would have to do that after a heavy operation anyway? Um, is there any other uh, uh, effect side effect? Not the, there are always risks with medications. There are always risks. But uh, having done this for quite a few years now, uh, we we make sure that we have ascertained that the patient is healthy enough for us to treat in our environment. And uh, and uh, the the medications we use are just like Valium, and people have Valium all the time in this country just to go to sleep you know, to help them sleep sometimes. So uh, the medications are not uh, the kind that, that can cause a lot of problems. And uh, the, these are medications that, that are very, very safe in terms of uh, use in, uh, in a clinical environment like ours. Right. And of course, it's only a surgery um, done at the most every few years or so, um, the need for it. So there's no becoming addicted really possible because it's not something like an aspirin you take all the time. No, it isn't. And then and, and like I said, this, this medication, the IV medication especially, is, is a very short acting. Uh, so let's say if I'm doing a one hour procedure, by the time I'm finished, the patient is having a conversation and able to stand up and walk out. You know, I mean, so we it's put very them controlled. in a real, you know, you know exactly yes. how long he gets knocked out. Yes, yes, exactly. And we are, we are, we are titrating the amount we are giving as well. So every 10, 10, 15, 20 minutes as the patient, we can see that the patient is arousing. We give him a little bit more. So we are never using too much medication or too little medication. 
but mm. we are always under control and the patient is is really awake by the time they're going out and in a very 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 short time right and if your procedure for some reason takes longer than you as a dentist expected you just give him a little more to cover that time yes we titrate it yes we Beautiful. titrate it we give them Beautiful. more yes so it seems to be again it's a, it's a wonderful thing because you know the, as you mentioned the fear of going to a dentist it probably comes from the old time where the drill was bigger than, um, you, you know, than a, <laughs> it was big. Well, uh, most, and, most. And, and the needles were big. They were like a, like a water hose almost, you know. Um, yes. And, 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 you know, it, 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 was, it was painful, bloody, um, and, and all that type of stuff. Uh, uh, the equipment, people probably only went when it was really hurting. So the tooth was usually very infected, which these days is not so much happening anymore. People go a little earlier. So, but not doing it because of fear, well, for whichever reason that comes, that's near here, near that, is taken away. It's and just, how, it's just, yeah, it's just harmful to their general health. So, yeah. access to treatment for patients like that, knowing that it's available, is very, very important. Right. And because, you know, this type of treatment, um, I mean, uh, the, the cetacean uh, dentistry, uh, really is not yet complete mainstream. I mean, yeah, a fair amount of some doctors have it, but apparently it's still a smaller percentage of doctors, dentists who do it than doctors who do do it. Uh, am I right there or what? It is. Yes, yes, you are very right. There's, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of access to doctors that practice it, and you really need to seek out the ones that, that do it if you need this type of service. Uh, so sedation dentistry is a special license that you have to take. You have to go and take these courses and, and you do at least 24 cases. Uh, I took my license at USC and we have to go and treat 24 patients before we are given that license under supervision. So yes, you are right. Uh, access to care like this is only available in certain uh, offices, certain dental offices. Thank you very much, Dr. Patel. Thank you.